Guys, today we are hunting black morels, possibly half morels and yellows. Um, I've been looking for over a half an hour, and I finally found one by itself. They are very thin this year for some reason. We had the same conditions as last year, very wet. Rains the two to three days a week. Um, I think the main problem is I'm on a east-facing slope. It's a steep bluff back here behind me, and it faces the east. Uh, right now, it would still be best to be on a south facing, but it's hard for me to find one that faces that direction without me crossing the river over into Illinois. So, I got a black morel here. It's the first one of the day. All right. About perfectly average size. Well, ma. Black morel, you're supposed to look all around you. Black morels are more likely to be in mother loads, what they call in big groups as opposed to yellow morels are usually in groups of just two to three so I need to really look around here when you find one like this the best thing you can do is get on your knees and start panning all around your area and he was underneath a leaf so the thing you gotta realize guys a lot of these black morels early in the season they hide underneath the leaves if it's a little drier I know it sounds stupid but I recommend you bring a leaf blower they ain't that heavy to carry just a cheap plastic leaf blower and you can expose a lot of these mushrooms doing that Guys, we are hunting morels once again, believe it or not, on a 35 degree morning, 34 degree morning, and I found one in the first minute. I just got to find him again. He was right here in front of me. I just seen it. There he is. Okay. So I got to go back to the car now and get something to keep him in. But we found one. It's a little guy, but it's because it's early in the morning, and it is fro it is actually damn near frosted two nights in a row. All right, little yellow morel. Where there's one, there's more. So what I'm gonna do now is stay on my knees and just pan very slowly. One of the things I've been looking for a lot the last two years, just through trial and error, is ferns on the ground and mossy rocks. I always seem to find them where there's mossy rocks. Because if you think about it, where there's springs at, natural springs, there's always lots of moss on the rocks. And that's because it's always a very damp area. We need something to keep them in. Okay. It's a good start. Didn't even take me one minute after being in the woods. It's all by itself, though. But you got to really keep an eye out because look how small it is. Barely poking out. I know. I was coming down the hill and found it. I was on my way to the railroad tracks. But no, we need to stay here now. Second, Morel. Actually, it was just the, just the top, no stock, but it looks fresh. See these mossy rocks where these ferns are at, guys? 
you find them in a woods, you're in the right area. Everybody claims look for certain kinds of trees. Yeah, that's important. But where you find these ferns and mossy rocks, that's a sign it's a very damp area of the forest. And usually holds a constant dampness to it. And they'll be there regardless of the kinds of trees. Well, this tree's dead, even though it's small. Look at this. There'll be something underneath here, I bet you. Or around this. Two morels in the first five minutes and then nothing in two hours. But she did find these four big hosses. I told her not really to touch them, but she did. I don't, I'll have to have my book to know if they're edible or not. But it was 34 degrees last night, so we really didn't expect to find any. So we found two, and that was it. All right. <laughs> How you doing guys? Today I'd just like to share with you just basic tools to learn how to hunt morel mushrooms. Uh, as you've seen the video after I'm done speaking here, I only get one this day, but that's because the weather was not the right way. Alright, so basically you got three types of morels. You got black morels, which come first in the early spring, and then you got half morels and yellow morels. Black morels are the ones that are known for being in larger groups, where half morels and yellows are usually in groups of two or three. Not saying they ain't ever in large groups, but they're typically found in smaller groups. Black morels are the hardest to find, but if you get lucky and find one, you're more likely to find a lot just being in one spot. All right, so what I like to look for, obviously you gotta pay attention to the weather. Uh, you really want two to three days of where it's about 60 during the day and it stays 50 or above at night, which is very rare, but it does happen. Uh, not really, definitely not freeze at night, but you want it to be around 40 and then mild during the day, but not up in the mid 70s. As long as it's 70 and below down to 60 then you're fine uh, you also want it to be of course uh, a lot of rain does a lot of good we've had two real good morel seasons here in Missouri because of the very wet springs uh, but that though let's talk about those magical days the the, the magic days is going to be the day after it rains and then it get the following day is sunny and warm like 70 degrees that's when you need to get out there Morel season can last anywhere for as short as two weeks when it's dry or hotter. And I've seen it last a whole month and a half. I think this year is going to be a, a long one just like it was last year. Now, 50% of hunting mushrooms is confidence. The education and prior knowledge. So you have to have all that in order to succeed at hunting mushrooms. If you, you ain't got the confidence, you're probably not going to find them because you're not going to be paying attention as well as you should be. And if you're going to the wrong places, then you're not going to find them. So where should I go? That's a typical question a lot of us get. What I like to this river in your area, the, the, the biggest river you, within an hour drive okay whether that be the Mississippi or if it's a smaller river I want to go where lowland or floodplains meets hills every river has a floodplain where both sides of each river to where the fur the and it's lowland and there's no hills but once you go over you will be in a valley and you you want to find that first hill that meets the floodplain because you got low elevation meeting high elevation and you want to start off early in the season on south or west facing slopes you also want to start near the bottoms of hills early in the spring 
and as the water or as the weather warms and progresses they tend to slowly go uphill more where there's less sun uh, <clears throat> anyway I like to personally hunt around the Mississippi River on the edge of the floodplain because of the types of soil the types of trees now let's talk about trees everybody always talks about ash trees and elm trees them are the number two trees that they absolutely love elm and ash but they do also like sycamore and oak and also fruit trees which you ain't gonna find apple trees just growing out in the wild in a woods I never have at least uh, apple trees are just artificially planted you know but if you got an apple orchard or something like that that'd probably be a good place to look <clears throat> one thing you want to avoid is pine forest you want a deciduous forest and one thing I look for is when you're looking at a woods before you're going into it look at it from far away and look how old those trees look you want that woods to be either a a very old forest where the trees are all over 20 and 30 years old where they're giant or you at least want it to be mixed because a forest that is mixed is a sign of a healthy forest that is regenerating itself. It has small and big trees. It's, it's just mixed. You don't want to pick a woods where you look into it and every tree looks the same. And every tree is only about 30 foot tall. Because that's generally going to be a new forest that hasn't been there very long. So there's not going to be a lot of old dead trees there and trees laying on the ground that have died and whatnot. So you want to avoid them types of woods. And it, like I said, and if every tree looks like it's the same species. If you pick a forest that you can tell by looking at it, it's got a large variety of trees. And it's okay if there's a few cedar trees in there. But you want to avoid a forest that's nothing but pine trees. But if you stumble across next, you know, your odds are that you own trees and ash trees and oak and sycamore and whatnot. Your tip is, is you, if you don't know these trees you need to learn them and that means learn them how they look without the leaves being on the trees because a lot of the mushroom season there is no leaves on the trees yet you need to learn what the bark looks like uh, the, you know the physical features of those trees if you have to take pictures with you print them off and put them in your pocket different barks look like that way you can tell now when you get into these woods the first thing you want to do is look around you in a full 360 and look for dead trees that are still standing if there's none of them you want to look on the ground for the biggest trees that you can see that are laying on the ground that have died and fallen over now that's what you want to look around is those dead trees that are laying on the ground and also ones that are dying or dead and still standing now they're not going to be around all these trees because they don't like every species of trees they prefer to be in certain spots but if you do that you will eventually encounter the right kind of tree now trees that are dying or dead or laying down in the woods you're in the wrong woods they're not you might find some, but you're not in the right place. I can tell you that right now. Now, what do you look for also when you're in the woods? I look for little ruts. Little galleys where a little tiny, tiny spring might come out of the mountainside. Or a little galley that washes down through the woods. That's where you want to start at. Is is at the bottoms of those because the, the soil will be more lo loamy there, loamy I'm sorry and typically have sand in it also you want the right kind of soil what I've experienced in my past is when I look for mushrooms in a, a really rocky clay uh, woods I don't ever find anything you want that soil to be dark with lots of dead leaves and sand mixed in with it and that's why you want to look in them galleys and everything folks now like I said before black morels come first and then half morels and yellows are later 
Now the later two mushrooms, they're easier to find because they're easier to spot by their color. The black morels are really tough. They can hide underneath the leaves. They can barely poke out and they blend in more with their environment. They are very hard to find for people that are uh, new to this. So if you're new and you ain't really done this much, I, I prefer you just wait until the uh, yellow morels are out, which are typically always after April the 1st, at least here where I live in southeast Missouri. And once you find one mushroom, you want to get on your knees and you want to pan. You want to go back and forth and you want to look really slow and just keep inching your eyes over in little two foot square lines and go back and forth. If you're not doing this, you're going to miss a lot. You're going to absolutely miss. You're going to overlook so much stuff. I hope this was a little helpful for you guys. Uh, hopefully I'll be making a real good mushroom video here soon. Uh, like I said, yesterday was just not the right day, uh, but it will be here in a few days. Alright, you guys take care.